everyone. In this video, we're going to have an example of conducting the vector autoregression uh, using R. In particular, we're going to be using Philippine data and we're going to try and explore associations between unemployment and GDP. And these associations typically form the construct of something called Okun's law. So uh, we're going to run through VAR and then we're going to build the model that includes uh, doing the lag selection and then checking for persistence. And we're also go going to do the robustness tests. And eventually what we're going to do is we're going to see um, some Granger causality, some impulse responses, which is um, indeed an application of VAR, as well as trying to forecast future values of our variables. So first thing to do is we need to load. Okay, we need to... Um, we need to load required packages for running var. Okay, so first step, so we have a couple of packages that we need in order for us to run um, a vector autoregression in R. So we start with the Orca package. Next, uh, there's a specialized package called vars. So we need that as well. So library uh, mfilter, another package, library, T series library uh, forecast and library tidyverse. Okay, so um, if in case there's an error in any of these commands, it just means that it's not installed in your R, so you may just want to install the package and call the library command afterward. So what we do is now we load the data set. So let's load the data set. Okay, and um, so let's name the data set Okun since we want to prove that law okay, or disprove it, whatever the case. So it's in a CSV file. So uh, let's load that CSV file. So file.choose. That CSV file is saved in my desktop. So that's it, sample var. And if you notice here in our environment tab, there should be a data set and uh, it should contain here uh, what's included in the CSV file. That's the date, real GDP growth um, and unemployment is here. And then we have two other variables, which we will not use for now. Okay. And then, so we've loaded the data set into uh, R already. So let's, uh, let's try and find some things about uh, about our data set for now. So, uh, so um, a simple graph. So let's see if we can graph it. So we'll use ggplot, okay, and then we're gonna get the data from Okun. So remember, we stored the data in an object called Okun. Then we wanna create a scatter plot, okay, between uh, GDP and unemployment, and then let's try and analyze it a bit. AES, X equals unem, Y equals uh, real underscore GDP underscore growth. Okay. And let's see. So here we have a scatter plot of uh, unemployment and real GDP growth. And what you can see is that, so it's relatively scattered. Okay. But Notice there's some sort of trend here. If the unemployment rate is low, say, for example, here, look here, say it's below six, okay, GDP tends to be high. But again, there are exceptions. So for example, here, the unemployment rate was quite high, but then GDP growth was quite high. And we have other things here. But generally, we see okay, that when the unemployment rate is low, okay, uh, real GDP growth is high. And when unemployment is high, okay, like in this case, real GDP growth is tends to be lower. But uh, I'm going to prove to you that in the Philippine case, okay, it doesn't hold as much as it does in developed countries. So you, may, you might be asking, what exactly is Okun's law? Okun's law states that there is a negative relationship between unemployment and GDP. So when unemployment is high, GDP growth is likely to be low okay, because uh, there is a productivity loss or a productivity, um, uh, a, there is a productivity that is underutilized that we cannot use so that can uh, bolster down GDP growth. So that inverse relationship okay, has been found to be true 
in a lot of countries and it's well documented but i'm gonna show to you now at least in the time frame that we have okay that that may not hold true for the philippine case so first step is we need to declare our time series variables okay and the way we do that is um we're gonna create an object so we're gonna get two objects and we have two variables okay that's uh, using the ts command so that will turn the variable we have into a series okay and what we're gonna do is from open okay we're gonna get okay for gdp real gdp growth okay and that starts at uh, uh that uh that data point starts at 1999 um third month okay and the data frequency that we have that's quarterly so the frequency is equal to four if it were monthly it would be 12 and so on so we're going to create a time series object of gdp okay and then we're going to uh declare it as a time series variable and there we go so we can see its value there and we'll do the same for unemployment unem unem okay so let's just call it unem that's ts open dollar sign unem okay start equals the same one nine 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 three whoops frequency four okay then we have gdp and unemployment there okay something nice to do is we want to plot the series okay so plot the series and we have so let's use the auto plot command auto plot since they're both rates we can use approximately the same scale of the y-axis on M. Okay, so we want to plot just uh whoops C bind. Okay, so we want to plot the series, then we get this. Notice we have unemployment is in blue, then GDP growth that's in this is real GDP growth, so that's in uh red. Okay, so those are the data points that we're gonna be using. Now again, we use var because we want to see associations between two or more series assuming that both of the variables in the series are both dependent variables. So we're letting the data be agnostic and speak for itself. So we're not imposing any sort of structure in the data. We just let the data speak for itself and uh, we run it as a vector auto regression. Okay, so something that uh, in, that's curious that, we, that I just want to uh, put for now is that let's, if we try and run an OLS, okay, so let's say OLS, one okay so let's try to run an OLS and what you'll notice is that uh, okay we can see okay so summary OLS one so the LM command will run an OLS between GDP and unemployment GDP being dependent unemployment being independent and then let's summarize so if you notice unemployment's coefficient is negative so it does have a negative effect on GDP and it's statistically significant okay but if we just run OLS, what we're imposing is that unemployment, okay, uh, affects GDP. But in this scenario, okay, GDP cannot affect unemployment because it's the dependent variable and unemployment is independent. So the, the train of causality or of correlation is from unemployment to GDP. But the philosophy of the VAR is that we we're, we're not supposed to be imposing structures it's not right for us to impose a, def, a definite structure on how variables would be related so better let the data speak for itself in this case so we have that okay so let's uh so we plotted the data and then we saw that there is indeed some negative relationship okay one thing we can do first is determine determine the persistence of the model and how do we determine that? Well, we use the uh, autocorrelation function or the ACF and the partial autocorrelation function or the PACF from sort of like the AR and the MA stuff that we've discussed before. So we can do ACF and that will generate an uh, autocorrelation function graph for GDP. Okay. And let's just call it uh, ACF. Oops. ACF for real GDP growth. Okay. And we should see it here. So we can see that the first few lags of GDP are indeed statistically significant, but it peters out quickly. 
then if we do the AR component, which is PACF, okay, so uh, let's make this PACF, then this one should be PACF. Okay, and we get the partial autocorrelation. Whoops, sorry. We get the partial autocorrelation function of real GDP growth. And we notice that uh, it's not necessarily that significant, at least in this case. Then what we can do is we can do the same for unemployment. Okay, so let's copy a command. So ACF unem, okay, uh, ACF for unemployment, unemployment. And then, so we have that. So notice there is a lot of persistence when it comes to unemployment, okay, because all of the lags are found to be relatively significant. Uh, and if we turn to uh, PACF, okay, so copy this, okay, whoops. Then do this main and the uh, uh, whoops, this should be PAC. Sorry, and we should get that. So, similarly, the, we, there is some sort of persistence in the model that we can see. Okay, now we can run the augmented decay fuller test, and that's fine, but let's skip it for now and let's go directly to finding okay, the optimal lags optimal lags so what we want to know now is right var uses by the name vector autoregression it uses autoregressive lags there are variants of the var called such as the varma which also uses moving average drafts but for the most part the basic var only includes the number of autoregressive lags that we're going to do and one thing that we need to know is how many autoregressive lags will be put in this case so uh, R has this command for us to select okay, the number of uh, the number of lags that we're going to do. So what we're going to do now first is we're going to bind the two variables in question. So let's create a binding, okun.bv. And then we're going to just bind or essentially group together GDP, GDP and unemployment. Okay, we're going to group them together. And then what we're going to do is... Um, we're gonna, just going to change the names a bit of uh, Okun BV. So we're just going to change the variable names. Okay, see, bind GDP and unemployment. And we get that. Then what we're going to do is lag select. Okay, so we can select the optimal uh, number of lags to use. So what we're going to do is we're going to tell R, okay, please select the optimal lags to use from the two variables that we have. Okay, and then let's test, say, approximately a maximum of 10 lags and just a constant type for now. Constant. Okay, so let's assume there's no trend for now. Whoops, type equals const, sorry, not constant, const. And that should give us that. Then what we're just going to do is from lag select, okay, that will create a variable inside that object called selection, and that will display to us our selection criteria. So, according to the Akaike, the Hanan Quinn, and this uh, indicator, we should use four lags for our var. According to the Schwarz, we should use one. So, since most indicators say four, let's use four. Okay. And uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to build the model. So, we build the model. So, Let's say model one, Oko, model, sorry, model Okun one. So we can be consistent. Then, uh, okay, so this is building var. Okay, so the command to do a var is var. Okay, right, and we're gonna use uh, our pairing, Okun.bv, which is the variables inside the var. Then P, which is your autoregressive order, is equal to 4 because according to the information criteria, we're going to use 4. Let this be a typical uh, var, so just const. Okay. Then season equals null. Let's assume no seasonal effects for now. And we have no exogenous variables. Okay. Null. Whoopsie. Null. And we can run the var. Okay. And we can do summary okay, of our var. And this is the result of our var 
model for now. Okay, so we have the VAR estimation results. Note, I can already anticipate that the results won't be that significant because if you notice, there's no really significant, not much significant uh, lags here. Okay, but what's important is that notice all of the roots, okay, are inside uh, the unit circle. Okay, so we have no uh, strenuous roots so the roots are all inside of this unit circle so our system is generally stable so this video is on building the var in the next video what we're gonna do is we're gonna diagnose and we're gonna try to forecast and do causality analysis using this same var model